The next couple of years in computer graphics are going to be extremely interesting to witness, and the fight between AMD and Nvidia is definitely starting to heat up. Nvidia doesn't enjoy quite the dominance it did with its Maxwell, Pascal as finally Turing architectures, with AMD's RX 6000 series fighting back rather well, not just in terms of the hardware, which of course is important, but also software too. It's going to mean that the competition between both players is heating up, and who knows what's going to happen once Intel join in on the fray. But there's one thing we can say about Nvidia. They do their best when they are facing stiff competition. And so this brings us to the RTX 3070 Ti. You basically take an RTX 3070, crank things up a notch, and you get a good understanding of what Nvidia's plan is with this card. You take the basic specs of an RTX 3070, but pair it up with significantly more memory bandwidth, thanks to the usage of GDDR6X rather than R6. And this gives you a good understanding of what the RTX 3070 Ti is all about. The Founders Edition cooler has seen some minor tweaks here or there compared to the RTX 3080 and 3070 Ti is definitely closer to the RTX 3080 in its basic appearance, such as, say, the fan configuration. But there are some obvious differences you can see. However, it is much more similar than its smaller brother, the RTX 3070. The very NVIDIA-like free display ports and single HDMI port remain in place, as you would expect, and we now see 48 SMs with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, and this is paired with a 290 watt TDP. The advertised boost frequency is 1770 megahertz, which is quite a bit more than the advertised boost of the RTX 3070. So the takeaway then in specs is that the RTX 3070 Ti offers a small additional smattering of CUDA cores, RT cores and Tensor cores, but is paired up with significantly more memory bandwidth. And as you can probably guess from the specifications of this card, well, it's really most at home powering a high refresh rate 165Hz monitor. Nvidia are basically saying that this card is a replacement in the market for offerings such as the RTX 2070 Super. You could also use this card, I believe, for 4K, as you'll see more in just a moment with some results. However, if you want to uh, go for like 60 FPS or greater in more demanding titles, you would probably be best to enable DLSS. So that brings us to the obvious question, how well does this card perform? We're running all of our uh, tests on NVIDIA's 46.61 uh, press uh, drivers, and I'm going to be pitting it against both the 3070 and 3080 graphics card. Now, I do actually have an RX 6800 XT, but I've been redoing all of the tests with an Intel 10900K at 5.1 gigahertz because, quite frankly, it makes things a little bit easier with my current test system rather than the Ryzen. There will also be a lot more extensive testing coming soon against both AMD's offerings and also DLSS and some other things with upcoming projects. But for now, I just wanted to put this video out to kind of give you guys an understanding of how this card fits in against NVIDIA's current lineup and also how the card is specced and what's giving you the greatest performance. We'll get into underclocking the card in just a moment, which gives us a really great understanding of where most of this additional performance is coming from. Hence, it's the memory uh, clock frequency. But again, we'll get into that in just a moment. Let's have a look at some game benchmarks.
So there we have it then. The RTX 3070 Ti, in our benchmarks anyway, is roughly 10% faster than that of the RTX 3070, which does make sense given Nvidia's pricing and also the specifications. The Founders Edition MSRP is 100 US dollars greater than the RTX 3070, but it's still uh, $100 cheaper than the RTX 3080. We'll get more into pricing and should you buy it in just a moment, but I did have one other question, and that is how much of this performance we're seeing in terms of the uplift is thanks to the memory bandwidth increase? Well, I'm glad you asked because, well, I've run some tests. With the RTX 3070 Ti, I underclocked the memory by 1000, so now it's 8500, and I also took the RTX 3070 and cranked its memory up by 1050. The results are, well, yeah, interesting. I won't read out all of the results here because you're quite capable of getting the gist, but Gears 5 benchmark dropped by 4 FPS at 4K with this less memory bandwidth, and Forza, with our testing anyway, was also quite sensitive to the changes in bandwidth. It's very interesting, and a great case of why it's not just about creating highly performant cores, but also changes in memory can make just as much of a difference too. Of course, the higher average clocks of the RTX 3070 Ti and additional CUDA cores are playing a big role too, and the additional RT and Tensor cores will also reflect that in specific titles. I also decided not just to underclock the card, but also the more traditional thing of overclocking the card. How much more performance can you wrangle out of the RTX 3070 Ti? I used MSI's Afterburner to increase both the power limit and clock frequency. I added 130 megahertz to the core and an impressive 1175 megahertz to the memory. This is thanks to the power limit being increased by the maximum, which is 10%. This pushed the core to sustain itself over 1950 megahertz and nudge itself to 1980. This, by the way, is compared to the mid 1800 megahertz that the Founders Edition card usually sits at at stock. Gears 5 and frame rate went from 54.9 to 57.9, which is 3 frames per second more. So, this brings me to the conclusions of the RTX 3070 Ti. Should you pick it up? Well, obviously the market is not exactly normal right now. As a reviewer, it's very difficult to make predictions three, six, nine months into the future with the current shortages. And I do realize it's very frustrating for you guys. And honestly, it's quite frustrating for me as well. Like it kind of sucks to be honest, but it just is what it is, and hopefully the situation does get better soon. The 3070 Ti is mining limited, at least with Ethereum, and all of the crypto crashes and instability in the market are definitely starting to take their toll on miners and their desire to mine, especially the more casual miners who maybe just have the desire to pick up one or two cards, particularly given prices are so inflated and just kind of all over the place at the moment. And again, with LHR becoming a thing, although albeit only for Ethereum and, car and coins, excuse me, like Ravencoin, and I believe there's some others, are not affected by the mining nerf. I did some experiments of that on the RTX 3080 Ti. But I can't really make judgments based on the used market because... No one knows what's going to happen in a couple of months' time. So all I can do is tell you guys from the retail perspective, as of the time I'm recording this, that I believe that the RTX 3080 would be the card I would go for if I had the additional budget, simply because I think it's a lot more capable for 4K. However, 100 US dollars, again, if we can get the cards at MSRP, which, well, we all know the story about that, you know, it's still a decent saving. And if you only want to play games at 1440p, then the 3070 Ti is quite a lot of firepower. And it does, again, make a good case for itself at 4K. I think the odd duck out in many ways of the lineup is probably the RTX 3070, because to me, the 3060 Ti, and I said this in my 3060 Ti review, it kind of almost makes the 3070... I don't want to say a bad buy, but it's so close in terms of uh, performance, but not that much more money. In my personal opinion, the two highlights of NVIDIA's lineup 
the 3060 Ti and the RTX 3080. Fortunately, AMD is there as well to offer great competition with cards such as the 6800 XT, and I'm super excited to see what FSR actually brings to the table, particularly when it comes to actually running it on NVIDIA's software and uh, NVIDIA's own hardware and comparing against quality such as DLSS titles. Although whether we see FSR and DLSS incorporated in the same title, I honestly don't know. And it'll be interesting to see if that's the case, because then we could do direct quality comparisons. So to close things out, the RTX 3070 Ti is a good solid card, but of course it's kind of in an interesting place in the market right now with the shortages. If it were my money and things were normal, which obviously they're not, I would rather go with the 3080. But, of course, your mileage may vary. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.